Well, good. Uh, welcome back. Um, let me uh, share with you something. Uh, I will share the uh, Canvas calendar. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, Brian. Okay. So this is where we're at. Day, well, in November. Let me back it up a little bit. Today is obviously 29, so we have activity seven being due this weekend on Saturday. Yes, uh, carbene chapter 10, chemical reactions. Okay. Um, then come um, November. Next week, basically next week, we're doing pretty good chapter-wise. And what I've done is I created for the fifth a study day. And so that day, after we're done with, with chapter, we'll, we'll do chapter 12 today and uh, jump into maybe 13 and whatever's left of 12 on Tuesday. And then Thursday, the fifth, uh, that's a study day. So basically, I mean, I'll be here. Uh, you got questions because on the 10th, the following Tuesday is your next exam, which will cover chapters 10 through 11. So that would be a good time to come in with questions. And if you're comfortable and you're happy, then, you know, I'll, I'll see you the uh, uh, following Tuesday on the 10th because I will continue the chapters uh, on the 10th as we normally do okay so the exam will open up uh, as normal 7 a.m and i believe 11 59 so so uh, thursday would be a good time if you got questions and not necessarily just for the exam uh, it could be any topic just bring them up, bring them uh, on thursday and we can go over them okay so um because we're like i said we're doing pretty good with respect to uh, keeping up with the chapters. In fact, we're a little bit ahead, which is good. And we are now on chapter 12, which some people used to call the mole concept, but no, we're not gonna talk about mole. We're gonna talk about the mole, okay? Now, this, this concept of the mole is very crucial. Because when we go get to the point where we are going to going to calculate uh, how many grams of X we need to react with grams of B, uh, we can't do a direct gram to gram comparison. We have to go through a common factor that grams of A understands with grams of B, and that is the mole. Okay. Now, the mole is nothing more than a number. That's all it is. We call it Avogadro's number, or the mole. Avogadro, way back when, came up with this concept and has been since then verified numerous, numerous times. But we all know, for example, that in a dozen, when we say the term a dozen, we're, we are talking about the number 12, okay? And so when we talk about a mole, it's nothing more than a number. It just so happens to be a humongous number. And this is where we get our scientific notation. You, we get to use it again. So if you forgot how to do that with, your, with the calculator, you might want to go back and refresh the memory, or at least let me know and we'll, we'll talk you through it. But that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so it's a pretty big, pretty big number. It also has a symbol, capital N with the subscript A for Avogadro's number. So as I stated, just like we say a dozen, we could be talking about a dozen donuts, a dozen cell phones, a dozen students. We know that we're talking about 12, okay? And if I were to say to you, okay, half a dozen then we know we're talking about six so the same scenario same concept is 
is there with the mole. It just happens to be a large, large number. We could talk about one mole, or we can talk about a quarter mole, or any any number of moles, 0 0.0001 moles. Okay. Well, how big is that number? Well, let me let me let me put this a little bit in perspective. If you take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and write it out longhand, you end up with 602 six, six trillion. You can notice that's 21 zeros. That's quite a bit. And in fact, if you were counting at a rate of one particle, one number per second, that was your rate of count. You count all the way to the end of Avogadro's number, it's going to take you 19 quadrillion years to finish counting that number. That's how large it is. Okay, uh, six trillion. I show you here on the left where we at. A billion has nine zeros, six trillion twenty one zeros, and all the way at the other end, we have what's called a Google Plus, which is quite a bit, quite a bit, big number. Okay. Now, another perspective is if we had a mole of softballs, we all know the size of a softball. Well, if we had one mole of those, all of those combined would be the size of the earth. Pretty big. Okay. Now, you might recall that on the periodic table, we talked about the atomic number. And let me pull this up real quick. Uh, point number one with respect to the periodic table. We're going to be using these atomic weights from now on. Now, use the atomic weights given to you on on the periodic table for Chem 130. Yes, I know you can get on the internet, and yes, I know you can get the periodic. Uh, uh, you can get the atomic weight of these elements, but they will give you different decimal numbers. And if you use those to do your calculations, and then you uh, plug it into Canvas if you got to answer something. It the the uh, chemist may not recognize it. Okay, so um, to keep it simple, use the atomic numbers given to you on the periodic table for chem one thirty. Now, what are the period? What are the atomic numbers? Those are the decimal numbers below the symbol. Okay, and so. If we were to take carbon, for example, you see the atomic weight for carbon is 12.01. Now, remember also when we were talking about this, we were talking about the isotopes. We said we have isotopes of carbon. We had carbon 11, carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. And then we said that what, there's a different percentage of each of the isotopes. And so what we do is we take the average of those isotopes per contribution. And the most uh, uh, abundant isotope was carbon 12, 12. The point being is that the atomic number, though it is a decimal number, comes from the average of whole numbers, carbon 11, 12, 13, and 14. Meaning that with respect to sig figs, remember those significant figures, we don't use the uh, atomic weights to determine significant figures because when you average out whole numbers, you end up with decimal numbers, you have an infinite number of <laughs> significant figures, okay, when you're dealing with whole numbers, okay. So now we also mentioned point number two was that. Uh, uh oh, we got some people in the waiting room. Let's find out what's going on here. Okay. Uh, we also mentioned that these atomic weights have units. And so the units here, and put those along that unit in long term memory, are grams per mole. Okay, the units for all the atomic weights, for all 118 of them, are grams, G, per mole. That being the case, guess what? That's a ratio. 
grams over moles. I can write that ratio as either grams over moles or moles over grams. Recall what we did when we talked, when we were doing calculations of conversion factors. I kept emphasizing the fact about a, a uh, ratio being able to uh, set it one or two ways, okay? Depending on the units, depending on what we needed. Everything here, all the units have grams per mole, right? So what that means is this, if you weigh out exactly 12.01 grams of carbon, I have one mole of carbon, okay? Which means that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. If I were to weigh out 52 grams of chrome, number 24, okay? Uh, no worries, Jason. If I have 50, if I weigh, I go to the lab and I weigh out 52 grams of chrome, what I just highlighted here, I have one mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? The concept here is very, it's very similar to the concept of eggs. <laughs> I say, well, eggs, what is this man talking about? All right, well, let's do this. All right, let's talk about eggs for a second. All right, we got small. And for argument's sake, we'll say that for a dozen eggs, they weigh 100 grams, okay, per dozen. Which, which is telling you what? That, that you have 100 grams per 12 eggs, right? It's a dozen. Okay. Now, let's say we got medium eggs. And for argument's sake, they weigh 200 grams per dozen. Okay. Which again, 200 grams per 12 of them. And finally, we've got, let's go large, large eggs. And again, for argument's sake, we're just going to say that a dozen of large eggs weigh 300 grams. So you can see that in all three cases here, large, small, uh, small, medium, large eggs, I have 12 eggs in a dozen, obviously, right? However, 12 for the small weigh 100 grams. 12 for the medium weigh 200 grams, and 12 for the large weigh 300 grams, okay? Just like the elements. Though I have one mole of every element there in 118, they each are gonna weigh differently simply because they got a different number of protons, different number of neutrons, and different number of electrons. Their total mass is going, going to change, okay? <laughs> Let me ask you this question, given going back to the example of the eggs here. If I have 400 grams of medium eggs, can somebody tell me how many dozen do I have? Two dozen. Exactly. Because I know that for medium eggs, each dozen weighs 200 grams. And so if I have weigh out 400 grams of medium eggs, that's equivalent to two dozen, okay? And if I were to say, okay, I got 100 grams of medium eggs. Can somebody tell me how many dozen that corresponds to? Five dozen? Uh, oh, be careful. Half a dozen. Half a dozen. Okay. Because the mediums, exactly, because the mediums weigh 200 grams for a dozen. And if I weigh out 100 grams, well, that's half of the 200, right? So I have half a dozen or six eggs. All right. Now, this concept, pretty straightforward. 
Now, instead of talking about 12, talk about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And for some reason, that kind of kind of twists things up a little bit. Just because we got a big number. Don't let it twist it up. We're still dealing with the concept of when I say half a mole, if I say one mole, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. Whatever, you know, the Avogadro's number is simply a number of whatever. It could be bananas, oranges, pickles, whatever, eggs, atoms, you know, ions, anything. It's just a number. And if I say half, half a gram, then obviously a half a mole is half of that number. And just like I used the example of 100 grams, okay, given that carbon weighs 12.0, what, 12.01 grams per mole, if you were to weigh out six grams of carbon, how many moles do you have? Half a mole? Got it. Exactly. Okay, half a mole. To see the relationship is still the same. And this is true for all the elements over here. Those numbers we're talking about grams per mole, another ratio. Now we're going to be using that system we talked about earlier by setting up the conversion factors and keeping track of your, your units to set up your system. You're going to end up using an average about three units of conversion factors so you can get from point A to point B. Because right now, like I said earlier, I can't calculate, if I got a reaction of, of A plus B and I weigh out 10 grams of A, well, I can't directly relate, relate how many grams of B that I need unless I go through moles. If I know how many grams of B, A I have, I can then calculate how many moles of A I have and then using the balanced chemical equation, that's why we've been balancing equations, I can calculate how many moles of B I need, and from the moles of B, I can then go to grams of B, okay? And so we're kind of putting it all together here. You know, we started off with the elements, these elements, and we talked about making these elements into ions, and these ions became compounds. We put the compounds together to have them react with each other to make re chemical reactions. We talked about balancing those chemical reactions <clears throat> because we're getting to the point now that from that balanced chemical equation, we can do some actual calculations, okay? All right, so let's go back to the mole. All right, so from the periodic table, and again, I emphasize using the periodic table uh, that we supply, uh, be able to answer how many grams per mole of whatever element you have, okay? Because like I said, sometimes these numbers change depending if you go on the internet and search them. It will vary. So again, I emphasize that the mole is simply a count, a number of whatever you want it to be. Atoms, ions, obviously in chemistry, we're using uh, atoms, ions, molecules, formula units, things of that nature, but you can have it count whatever you want to count, okay? Now, <clears throat> taking the periodic table, we know that in one mole, carbon weighs 12.01, gold weighs 196.97, and sodium is 22.99. You don't have to memorize this because it's in the periodic table. That is the atomic weight and recognizing that, that the units for the atomic weight is grams per mole, okay? All right, so uh, <clears throat> the molar mass. Well, you might hear the word molar mass and atomic weight. We kind of interchange them at times. But the molar mass is nothing more than adding up the atomic weights of all the elements in a chemical compound, okay? And in order to make sure we're using the right one, we have to make sure that the, we write the correct formula. So this is what we, we've been doing up to this point, okay? 
they give you the name here and you need to write the formula because from the formula you're you're going to you're going to be able to write the molar mass and so we went through the exercise we're given the name we want to put together barium hydroxide so i write the ions of barium i know that barium is in a plus two element when it becomes ionic it will be a plus two i should say it's in group two element when it becomes ionic it will be a plus two because it has two valence electrons the hydroxide which is the moiety that creates classifies one as a base is from the polyatomic ion table and that is the OH minus, okay? Polyatomic ion. Uh, being a negative one, we need two of them to counter the positive two of barium. And so we need two hydroxides, therefore I need the parentheses around the hydroxide with the subscript two to designate two of them. And therefore my formula is as follows, barium, parentheses OH and parentheses subscript two, okay? Barium hydroxide. Well, that tells me I have one barium, I have two oxygens, and I have two hydrogens. So going to the periodic table and writing down the atomic weights of those elements, barium's atomic weight is 137.33 grams per mole. Oxygen, there's two of them. Each one is 16, so that's 32. There's two hydrogens. Each one is, is uh, 101, okay, times two, so it gives me 2.02. .02. Adding all those up, the molar mass for barium hydroxide is 171.35 grams per mole. Just like the atomic weights on the periodic table for all the elements, the molar mass tells me this, that if I weigh out 171.35 grams of barium hydroxide, guess what? I have one mole. And that means that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of barium hydroxide, okay? If I look at water, H2O, the molar mass of water would be what, 18.02 grams per mole okay how do i know that well let's do that real quick we got h2o we know the formula for ox uh, water okay and we got two hydrogens each one at 1.02 oh 1.01 grams per mole and plus we have the 16 for oxygen, which gives us a total of uh, what, 18.02 grams per mole for H2O. Now, this is an interesting thing if you think about this for a moment. Okay, that is the molar mass for water, 18.02 grams per mole. Okay, so if I weigh out 18 grams, the density of water is roughly one. So that's basically 18 cc's or 18 milliliters of water. You know, if I were to measure that out, 18.02 grams, I have one mole. Now think about all the water that's in your body. It's in your body. Ballpark, I think we're told we're like 70% water. Who knows? I don't know if that's a true statement or not, but we're, 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 there's a lot of water in our body. <laughs> take your weight, convert it to grams, take 70% uh, of that. <laughs> that is a lot of water molecules just in your body. But just think of the ocean. How much water is just in the ocean? And think of all the water molecules that are out there. That Those numbers are, are just mind-boggling. How big those numbers are and how many molecules of each of each uh, molecule of water is out there. Just so many of them, just a humongous number, just mind boggling, okay? With respect to units, don't forget, it's not the, the atomic weight, the molar mass has the units of grams per mole, just like the atomic weight, 
Okay, not, not just grams, but it's grams per mole. All right, so let us continue. So now Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 and 23rd, okay? That is also a ratio in which I can write one or two ways, like up here on the left or on the right, okay? It's like we've been doing ratios before. Which one I use depends on the question. And thing to remember is the units that I want is because is going to be always going to be the numerator. And so if I want atoms or molecules or whatever, I'm using the one on the left. If I want my answer to be in moles, I need that. I'm going to use the one on the right. Okay. And so if we look, if we look at the problem here, the first one it says, how many calcium atoms are in 0.25 moles of calcium, okay? Well, we're given moles of calcium. We want to know how many atoms, so I'm going to be using Avogadro's number, the one on the left, okay? And so I set it up as follows, because if I follow my units again, keeping track of my units, you can see that moles cancel, leaving me with atoms, okay? Atoms, because that's what I'm looking for, atoms. They could have said molecules, they could have said bananas if they wanted to, but that's the units I, I need. And so this is where your scientific notation comes into play again, as far as your calculator. Uh, you type in 0 0.250, multiply it by 6.02, Depending on the calculator, you have a double E button or EX, EXP button, or you have that button that had the times and then 10 to the X button. There were three types of buttons. And you type in 6.02, hit your button, type in the 23, then multiply by uh, 0.25 and hit equal, and then you got your answer. Okay. Let me give you, let me see, let me give you food for thought. The problem says a quarter of a mole of calcium. Can you tell me how much that would be in grams? Or can you tell me how you could figure that out? How many grams would 0.25 moles of calcium be? Which is roughly a quarter of a mole. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. How many grams are there in one mole of calcium? Where can I find that information? Don't make it difficult. You got to write, the, if you got the periodic table nearby, you got the answer. Is it 40.08? That's for one, for one mole. Okay, so how much do you think a quarter of a mole would weigh? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it just be a fourth of that 40? All right. In other words, all right, let's do it this way. Look at your units. 0 0.25 moles calcium, okay? We know from the periodic table, we got 40 point, uh, what was that, 40.08 grams calcium per one mole. We got that from the periodic table. And so doing that would give me roughly about 10 grams, 10 grams, about 10.02, 10.02 grams of, of uh, calcium. 
a quarter mole of calcium would weigh around 10.02. Okay, look at my units there. Moles of, of calcium, cancel out moles of calcium, leaving me with grams of calcium, okay? So, you know, think, think, about, think about the mathematics of it. Does that, is the mathematics you're doing, is it reasonable? Does it look like, for example, we can, we can see that 0.25 is roughly a quarter, right? 25%. And so 1.51 times 10 to 23rd, that's roughly, that is 25% of Avogadro's number. Also, we know that in one mole, calcium weighs 40.08 grams. And they're asking me here, well, how much would a quarter of a mole away. So it would be just like that, just like that example with the medium age when I said 100 grams, how many dozen I had? There was half a dozen, right? Same, similar, similar here. Here I got a, a quarter, a quarter of a dozen, so to speak, but it's the mole. So the weight would be a quarter of the total weight of one mole, a quarter of 40.08. So this would be about 10 grams. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Now the second part says, calculate the number of moles of 3.75 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so here you, you're looking for moles starting with molecules. So I'm gonna use Avogadro's number on the right because I want moles unit wise, okay? And uh, look at my units to make sure things cancel out. The MLCLS, that's shorthand for molecules. Molecules cancel out, okay? And so 3.75 times 10 to the 27 molecules of oxygen is equivalent to 6,230 moles of oxygen. All right. Any questions so far? Now, this is this mole calculation. Here we're going from grams to moles. That's notice what you're asking. Question, the first question, how many grams are in 1.667 moles of oxygen gas? Second one, you're going from moles to grams. In the last two, you're asking again from grams to moles, okay? Third, the last one, you have how many grams if you have the number of atoms? So it might take a couple of conversion factors. All right, let's take the first one. First one says, how many grams are in 1.667 moles of oxygen gas? Okay, well, what do we know? about oxygen as far as its property, one of its properties, what is that? Isn't oxygen one of the diatomic? Yes, if we, if we are given, when you look at this question, let me highlight it. If we are given moles and we're being asked to go to grams, Guess what I need? I need the molar mass of oxygen. Okay. Now you may be tempted to go to the product table and say it's 16. But is it really? Because they're telling you oxygen gas. And the same is true for hydrogen gas. Or chlorine gas. Okay? Or bromine. What do all those have in common? They're diatomic, remember? And so being diatomic, their molar mass is twice of one oxygen. So I need a molar mass of 32 grams per mole, okay? Second question, they're asking you how many moles if I have 45 grams of silver? So all they say was silver, so you need the molar mass. 
you need the molar mass of silver. And it's just the atom, so you can just go to the periodic table and look it up. It's given to you there. Okay. Now, over here, just like the first question, they're asking you how many grams are in 0 .00, 0 0.0554 moles of water. And so I need to first find the formula of water, which we know, H2O. And then I also need the molar mass, which is what we calculated earlier, 18.02 grams. Okay. The last one, they want to know how many grams. The fact that they want grams should tell you I'm going to need the molar mass slash atomic weight. In this case, they're asking about potassium, so I just need the atomic weight of potassium. Okay. But they're starting to giving you atoms. Well, I can't go directly from atoms to grams. I have to bring in Avogadro's number to convert the atoms to moles. And then from moles of potassium, I can go to grams of potassium based on the atomic weight of potassium. Okay. So you see how the, the middle person, the middle unit here is moles? I need to get from atoms to grams or grams to atoms, but the only way to do that, I have to go through moles. Okay, so let me give you that. And so if we look at the first one, we're given 1.667 moles of oxygen. And they said oxygen gas. So we are talking about the diatomic oxygen. Otherwise they would have said oxygen atom, okay? so. Anytime you see the term gas at the end, you're talking about diatomic, the diatomic ones, that is. Okay. And so <laughs> I set up the molar mass because there's it's 32 grams per mole because there are two oxygens. And notice, keeping track of your units, notice my moles cancel, leaving me with grams. Okay. Uh, second one, they want to know how many moles are in 45 grams of silver. Well, 45 grams of silver, I got to find the atomic weight, and that's 107.87 grams per mole. But I want to write it with moles in the numerator because that is what I'm looking for. The way I got it set up now, my grams cancel out, leaving me moles unit wise which is what I'm looking for. So taking 45 divided by 107.87 gives me 0 0.42 moles of silver, okay? And let's rehash that. If I weigh out 45 grams of silver, I have 0.42 moles of silver, okay? Um, the third one, they want to know how many grams. They're telling you that you have 0 0.055 moles of water. Okay, and as like I mentioned, I need to get determine the molar mass of water. One oxygen, two hydrogens is 18.02 grams per mole. I want grams in the numera numerator because my moles, I want to set it up properly so my moles cancel out, leaving me with grams of um water and so 0 0.0554 moles of water correspond to almost a gram of water 0 0.998 grams okay um then finally they're giving you how many atoms of potassium you have and they're asking you well, what does that correspond to in grams, okay? And so that tells me that at one, I need Avogadro's number because that's gonna to convert to moles of potassium. And then I need the atomic weight of potassium because then that would give me grams of potassium, okay? So I need two conversion factors and that's where your scientific notation comes into play. And so I, uh, Type in the numbers and you should come up with 
times 10 to the negative six grams. That's a small amount. It's a small amount of potassium. Most balances can't weigh. Those balances you find in the lab can't weigh that, weigh that accurately. And that small of an amount of material, you have 4.75 times 10 to the 16 atoms of potassium, a lot of atoms of potassium for that small amount of material. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the, the takeaway here is when you set the problems up, you know, set it up in the manner that you remember the atomic weights, the 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 um, molar, um, the, well, the atomic weights also, but the molar mass, they can be written up with grams over moles or moles over grams. And when you're dealing with atoms or molecules or ions or what have you, then you need to use Avogadro's number to get you to moles, okay? Everything goes through moles eventually. Okay. Now, under special conditions, we have what are, what, so special conditions are called uh, STP or standard temperature and pressure, okay? STP, which we have right here. Okay. And only under STP conditions and only for gases. So the standard temperature and pressure, standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius and the pressure is one atmosphere. We are approximately one atmosphere here, okay? And one atmosphere, as we go up, up, uh, atmosphere gets a little bit less. Okay, as we go underwater, we got more atmosphere. It gets stronger. We got more material on us. So at one atmosphere and at zero degrees Celsius, and only for gases, the following is true. It states it's it. What is true is that gases have a volume, a molar volume of 22.4 liters or one mole gas, okay? So we got some examples of gas and if we had, if we had one, one uh, mole of each of these gases, okay? Of hydrogen, fluorine, ammonia, xenon, and methane, well, obviously we're gonna have Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And obviously, because they're different atoms, different number of protons and neutrons and electrons, they're gonna have a different weight, just like the eggs, small, medium, large. Yeah, we got a dozen of each egg, but they're gonna weigh differently just by virtue of size, okay? But under these conditions, all of these gases have this relationship of, they have a volume, one mole of that gas has a volume of 22.4. Guess what? It's another ratio you can utilize, okay? 22.4 liters per mole, or you can write it as one mole per 22.4 liters, another ratio. But I overemphasize the fact that it must be at standard temperature and pressure. If a question ever asks you to measure a volume and they don't mention STP or they don't mention zero degrees in one atmosphere, you can't answer the question. There's not enough information, okay? There's a bond. All bets are off unless you're at STP. So at STP, one mole gas occupies a volume of 22.4, regardless of what gas it is. Okay, now how do we utilize this? Well. Just like Avogadro's number where we're setting up that ratio, we set it up the same way, depending on what we're looking for. First question says, well, what is the volume of 1.25 moles of argon gas at STP? They mentioned STP, meaning I can use a 22.4 liter per mole relationship, okay? And so I set it up with liters in the numerator because you can see that my moles cancel leaving me with units of 
liters. Moles cancel, moles cancel. So 1.25 moles of argon gas has a volume of 28.0 liters. Now look at the numbers. Is it consistent with the mathematical function that you're doing? Also, is it consistent with the fact that you know that in one mole, I have 22.4 liters. So this gas is roughly one and a quarter mole. So I'm gonna have a little bit more than 22.4 liters, which is the case, we end up with 28. So yes, the number looks reasonable and it was done correctly mathematically. If by chance that number is much less than 22.4 liters, that probably what happens is you, instead of multiplied by 22.4, you may have divided, okay? Which, you know, that's just, just because you plug the number in, don't think that's the correct answer. Think about the answer. Does it make sense? Because you're given 1.25 moles, so your volume has got to be greater than 22.4, okay? The same is true, the converse. If it would have been 0.5 moles, then you can see that you're going you're gonna to be using half of that 22.4. Your answer should be half. All right, so the next one is how many moles is 30.4 liters of oxygen gas, again, at STP? And so we continue with the 22.4 liter per mole relationship, but this time I want moles in the numerator because my liters are canceling out and they're set up properly. Okay, I got liters cancel with these liters, leaving me with moles, okay? And again, think about the answer. I start off with 30.4 liters, okay? but not quite 22. At 22, my answer would have been one, right? So I got a little bit more than 22.4. So my answer should be a little bit more than one mole. And it is, it's a roughly, you know, it, roughly 1.4, or actually 1.36. So yes, the number is correct, mathematically. Again, if you inadvertently inverted that and you multiplied, then you're gonna get a tremendous number that you might think is correct, but it's not, because it doesn't make sense given which you're, given the 30.4 liters that you're given in the problem. Okay. All right. Now one one more. In this scenario, you are asked to calculate the mass. So we need to calculate mass. That means I need. Molar, um, the molar mass, okay? I'm given four and a half liters of chlorine gas. Keyword again, chlorine gas, okay? It's one of the diatomics, so it's Cl2, okay? Which means I gotta go, the molar mass is, uh, chlorine is what, 35.45 times two. So I gotta double that. Because I gotta, I gotta go from moles. From here, I'm gonna have volume, uh, volume or liters. I gotta convert that to moles using that relationship of 22.14 liters, 22.4 liters per mole. That gives me moles of chlorine gas. Once I have that, then I need a conversion factor, which is the molar mass of chlorine gas, to give me two grams. Okay. And so here I got it set up right here. You can see liters cancel out. Moles cancel, leaving me with grams. So you can see, it start seeing a little trend here. When I have moles and I want to get grams, I multiply by the molar mass. If I have grams and I want to get to moles, guess what? I'm dividing by the molar mass. It's another way to help you remember if you forget to keep track of your units. Okay, so four and a half liters of chlorine gas weigh approximately weigh fourteen point two grams. Okay, fourteen point two grams of chlorine. 
All right, so let me clear this up here. This flow chart kind of puts it all together for you. Right. And thing to note here is moles. In order for me to start, when I start from grams and I want to get to atoms or molecules or formula units or whatever, I got to go through moles. And if I have grams and I need to know the volume, if and I'm at STP, I still need to go through moles, okay? <laughs> and to get to atoms, I need Avogadro's number. To get to moles, starting from grams, I need the molar mass. And to get to volume, if I'm at STP, I need the 22.4 liters per um, moles. And this is just, you know, right here, everything is written to you, written in one direction, but keep in mind, you can go in both directions here, okay? You don't necessarily have, it's a one-way street. I can start with atoms, and if I wanna get volume at STP, then I gotta get, convert my atoms to moles, and then from there, I go down to volume. And if I have atoms and I want grams, guess what? I go through moles, using an Avogadro's number, and then using the molar mass, I get to grams, okay? So every, everything's interrelated with moles. Moles is very crucial. That is the, the one factor. And we'll continue with this relationship when we get into the reactions of A and B. But it's, it, we're getting into the mole rate. So remember, we, we, when we balance the reactants A plus B, or the mole ratio is one to two or one to one. So if I have one, if it's a one to one, one A to one B, and if I calculate the moles of A, guess what? I have this, the moles of B, okay? And then from the moles of B, I can go to grams of B using the molar mass of B, okay? All right, so the concept of the moles is uh, very, very crucial and very important. So hopefully you uh, grab a hold of it. <laughs> okay, here's an example here of the problem. It says, how many grams does 17.35 liters of neon gas mass at STP? Basically, how much does 17.35 liters of neon gas, how much does it weigh when you are at STP? Then the second part is, well, how many atoms does this correspond to, okay? So what we do is we write down what we're given and what we're looking for. And in this case, I went ahead and gave you the answer, but we're given 17.35 liters and what we're looking for is grams of neon. I write it down because that way it helps me keep track of how to get from point A to point B. Okay, so liters, I need something to get rid of liters. And I do know that the problem says I am at STP. Therefore, I can use the 22.4 liter per mole relationship. And I got moles in the numerator because that gets rid of my liters, get, gets me into moles, which is my factor that I need to get from point A to point B. And once at this point, I'm at the moles of neon gas, knowing the molar mass of neon, which I can find from the periodic table, it has 20.18 grams per mole. I can now multiply that factor by 20.18 grams, and that gives me 15.6 grams of neon, okay? Which is which is kind of consistent if you think about it, because neon gas, one mole of neon gas would occupy 22.4 liters, right? But we're at 17, we're much less 22, so that weight, also one mole of neon gas would weigh 20.14 grams. We calculate 15.16, which is consistent. We should not have a number greater than 20.18. 
because we're given less than 22.4 liters to begin with. Okay, so that that number is consistent with the problem, the 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 with what we are given in the problem. Then the second one is how many atoms this this is. Again, we write down what we're given and units of what we're trying to uh, obtain, in this case, atoms. And so again, we use the same relationship to begin with, the first one, because that gets us into moles. But this time, instead of the molar mass, because we, we're being asked to calculate the number of atoms, we need Avogadro's number, okay? And uh, multiplying that by Avogadro's number at the end, you can notice here that I didn't cancel things, but you can see how liters canceled in the first one, moles canceled, and moles, oh, moles canceled there, giving me grams, and then same thing in the bottom, liters cancel, moles cancel out, leaving me with atoms, okay? And so just by following my units, I can see that, okay, I have uh, set it up properly, right? When, when you're asked to show the work, this is the type of stuff that, that is being asked, just like the, the uh, conversion factors we did way back when. This is the type of stuff showing uh, all the conversion factors. And I do give credit for showing conversion factors. You may have an incorrect number because you inadvertently plugged in the wrong number. But if you show that you set it up properly, I do give credit, obviously, for the work that's been set up properly. Okay. If you just show me, so basically what I'm saying is that a problem like this, it could be worth, I don't know, uh, let's say four points. Well, you might get one point for the correct answer, but the rest of the points are for showing your work. So if your answer is correct, but you show no work, then the only thing you get is a point. But if your answer is incorrect and you showed the work that was correct, you, you will get to show the correct work points, okay? All right, any questions so far? Here it is up. Kind of brings us to density. We did talk about density before, uh, but we're gonna kind of expand on it a little bit. Density by definition is, is nothing more than the, the ratio of mass over volume. Remember everything, all matter has density. All matter has mass, all matter has volume. <clears throat> Therefore it has density. Now we can take the molar mass when we deal with gases, we can take the molar mass and the molar volume and we can calculate the density without really doing uh, any type of weighing, okay? But only if we're at STP, because we know that at STP, the uh, volume for any mole is 22.4 liters per mole. The molar mass, we know the formula, we know the molar mass. Nitrogen is 14, there's three hydrogens, the molar mass of now, ammonia NH3 is 17.4 grams per mole. Divide that by 22.4 liters per mole. The units of moles cancel out, okay? Leaving you with units of grams per liter, which is mass over volume, which is density, okay? All right. Um, what I'm, what I'm gonna do here, because the other class I stopped this slide and I wanna keep it consistent so one class isn't too far ahead or behind. So I'm gonna stop here on this chapter, on this page. And then on uh, uh, next Tuesday, we'll continue. I gotta show some more information concerning percent composition. And then uh, we'll continue on Tuesday with this chapter and the next chapter. And then, like I said, next Thursday will be a study day. Okay.
So let me 